you have a change of 50, 25 basis points and so on. Let's, let's just go back to the basics and, and the big picture. In this video, Ray Dalio simplifies the complex world of finance. He explains how bond yields, inflation, and interest rates work together and why they're important for the economy. Dalio also talks about the challenges of debt and how it affects our money and businesses. He shares his thoughts on how the economy might slow down and what that means for interest rates and the Federal Reserve's plans. Understanding these financial basics is crucial for everyone, not just experts. So, if you want to get smarter about money and the economy, this video is for you. Bond yield, it, roughly speaking, has got to be um, about what we determine the expected inflation rate will be over um, the period of time. And that, that's, there's, of course, there's a question about that. That number it probably is settling into the vicinity of three, three and a half percent. That's the right number. There has to be um, above that a real interest rate. In other words, uh, for those who are creating, holding debt, debt assets, they have to receive a return above the inflation rate by something probably in the vicinity of one and a half, two percent. So that is going to get you in the vicinity of four and a half, five percent interest rates. It, and you're seeing the movement around that level. Then there's the big question of the supply demand for bonds. In other words, uh, the government produces a certain amount of bonds that are in light of and size of that is equivalent of roughly the size of the deficit. That means they're going to have to sell a lot of bonds. OK, and then we look at who are the buyers of those bonds and do they have an adequate appetite? Uh, and that's a big risk because we have uh, uh, many who own those bonds have had losses in that. That's not just banks. That is central banks. That is Japanese investors and so on. And so there's a supply demand issue. You'll have these wiggles around there, but those are the fundamentals that will drive it. So as we look forward, we have a, we have a debt problem because you can't keep adding to debt faster than you add to income without that problem. So we're seeing the need for the rise in real interest rates so that the creditor gets a, uh, an adequate return at the same time as we have a supply demand balance. So that's how it looks to me. What's happening in the economy is that a lot of money was sent out um, in the form of checks and the like and went out to a lot of people. And, um, and so there was the household sector uh, did well because the government sector did poorly. They got themselves in deeper debt intentionally so that the household sector and the business sector could be better off. And then there's the rise in interest rates. What the happens from that is that that savings of money gradually goes down and also the uh, debt maturities as they, they roll forward gradually go up and create a squeeze. So there's an emerging squeeze happening. However, the, because the unemployment rate is relatively low and because the compensation levels have been relatively high because of that set of circumstances, the household sector's income has been good. So you have a sector in uh, the household sector, hence the economy as a whole, and I'll include, include the business sector in that, in which, by and large, the financial transfer of wealth from the government as it gave, got in debt and gave it to the public sector, uh, gave right. it to the private sector, right. Right. that allowed that, that to happen. So that is a formula in a punchline. I'm sorry I'm taking too long. Um, that is a, f a formula for a gradually weakening economy, not a big break in the economy, a slowing of that economy. Right. I think that's what we're seeing. And as a result of that, that's what you're seeing in the bond market. Most likely, I think the rate structure is going to uh, be staying at its level, perhaps uh, slightly less, but there's a range of uncertainty around that having to do with the supply demand question. We're now at a period of time where the supply of bonds to be sold will be hit, start hitting the market. And now we have to see the demand issues of that and that'll be around there. I, I think that probably 
in the vicinity of, you know, I would say somewhere in the vicinity of relatively flat. I don't think there's going to be uh, any important change in the Fed uh, policy uh, other than um, maybe a slight easing as the economy slows down. I think the thing to realize is that there, uh, the economy will likely weaken. In other words, its growth rate going to something close to zero, plus, plus or minus, maybe one percent. And with that, that that exerts a slight downward pressure on interest rates. At the same time, the supply issue becomes an important issue. I think we're talking about the short term uh, as very distinct from the longer term. Um, the short term we just talked about. The longer term is that we are at a point in which we are borrowing money to pay debt service. And there is a process by which when, when you keep having debt growth faster than income growth, then that means that you have debt service encroaching on your spending. It's the same for the government as it is for us. And as that happens, and you want to keep spending at the same level, there is the need to get more and more into debt. And the way that works, it's like a, it, it, it accelerates. We are at the point of that acceleration, which creates the supply-demand problem. And it's made worse by the other issues that we're talking about. I, uh, the internal political issue, the internal social conflict issue uh, there is something that is affecting foreign demand for, for bonds. For about 40% of our debt uh, is sold to foreigners. And so there is a concern of the American politics, of, 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 of the controlling of this debt crisis and these types of things. So we come back to the same basic question. How good, how strong are we going to be? When we talk about strong, what, what I mean is also economically strong. And economically strong means financially strong. That means it's just a basic thing. Financial, financially strong means do you earn more than you spend? And do you have a good income statement as a country? Do we have a good income statement? And do we have a good balance sheet? More assets than we have liabilities. The worse that gets, the more we are going to have that long-term problem. And it's just, you can see it in the numbers. It's just a matter of numbers. We are near that inflection point.